The city of Oakland historically has had huge violence rates, some of the worst in the country. The communities that are hit hardest by violence uh, are really in East Oakland and in West Oakland. My church is in the flatlands at the corner of 86 and Olive, not far from where a lot of shootings happen. There were about 300 clergy and other concerned citizens talking to the mayor, Jean Kwan, asking that something be done and that a strategy be brought into Oakland that would reduce homicides. So I was curious and I went and um, listened to this uh, Reverend Jeff Brown out of Boston about their experience and went to a night walk. And when I did the night walk, I felt like I could do something about violence in Oakland. We just want the community who includes those folks who might be perpetrators or victims of gun violence to know that we're out here, we love them, but we want the guns to go. The city of Oakland passed Measure Z in 2014. Uh, there was another measure called Measure Y passed in 2004. Uh, these measures were incredibly important uh, because what they do is um, they raise uh, through this tax initiative, are currently close to $26 million a year just focused on reducing violence. The funding that comes from Measure Z go to organizations providing a variety of services, outreach, employment training and job placement, life coaching and case management, uh, as well as working with uh, young girls who are sexually and commercially exploited. Uh, so through Measure Z, uh, there is a parcel tax placed uh, on homeowners. It's roughly about $100 per home. And then there's also a small surcharge that is placed on public parking. So this is what generates the revenue. Well, Oakland Unite consists of a network of about 26 community-based organizations throughout the city, and all of them are tasked with this very difficult challenge of trying to reduce violence. So Oakland Unite is a division of the Human Services Department, and our job is to be a steward of these funds for the city of Oakland. How it works is City Dollars fund a community-based organization to hire uh, case managers or life coaches, often formerly incarcerated individuals themselves, what we call credible messengers, people who have similar lived experiences as the clients that we're engaging. And they develop a relationship with the clients. And that's a big difference, right? This is not just service brokering. It's not about what are your needs, let me get you a job, let me try to find you some housing. The first Part of this work is let me be in relationship with you. Let me let me understand you. Let us get to learn each other. We want to have build a trusting relationship. And then yes, if you need a job, I'm going to try to connect you to a job. If you need housing, I'm going to try to connect you to housing. But it's first about a relationship and about helping someone make better decisions. We was outside, me and some friends, you know, a little barbecue going on, you know. And somebody just came through and just started shooting, and I had to be the one in front of everybody. So that's, amazing. that's how I get hit so many times. So I went to the hospital. So this girl I know who I went to school with hit me on Instagram. At first she asked me that I know such and such. I'm like, no, nah, I don't know these people, you know. I thought it was a setup for me going to jail, going back to the feds or whatever like that. So I called them and they explained to me like, no, nah, this ain't nothing about the police. This is, you know, we heard about your incident. We trying to, you know, help you out, get you right. I met Leon right here, he was my coach, so he helped me out with a lot of stuff, helped me fill out paperwork and all that type of stuff. They ain't gonna, they ain't gonna force you to do anything that you don't wanna do. So that's what made me change my life around, to start working, stay out of trouble, because they just kept it solid with me. So I just keep it solid with them, you know what I mean? One, I mean, I just stress the fact that we're not connected to the police, even though it's a, you know, city-based, organization we're funded through you know Oakland United Measure Z I explained that everything we do is confidential if it wasn't for this program I'd probably be right back in the streets still in the hood in the jail for the rest of my life or dead if it wasn't for this program essentially the programs that we currently have are in three buckets prevention intervention and healing when a individual is injured and in the hospital, that's where we see our golden moment to come in and start to build a relationship. We go in and work with uh, gunshot victims, with uh, stabbing victims, with assault victims, and we 
attempt to provide uh, post-discharge case management services, very intensive support services. Measure Z provides the, the resources for the program. People can stand on their flag and go to a neighborhood at 10 o'clock at night and say, introduce myself to somebody and say, you know, this is one of the most dangerous streets in Oakland at this time. So I just wanted to hug your neck and say, I love you, because people who stand on this corner at 10 o'clock on Friday night get shot a lot. Then that often is engages them in conversation. Yeah, my cousin got shot. Then you get to dance with them on that and say, then why are you standing here? If everybody who look like us gets shot on this corner at this time on Fridays and Saturday nights, my, my message to you is we need to figure something out. Because the population we're currently focusing on are people of very high risk, which means they're in their 20s, they have significant criminal justice involvement, these are not people who are just knocking down the doors of community organizations to get services, right? These are folks who sometimes refuse services. But this is a population that's incredibly critical to engage. Uh, because they are at highest risk to be involved in violence. And so we provide financial incentives to this population. So city dollars are going to incentivize potential clients to come in and enroll in services, to get a life coach, to get a case manager, to get a job. Not only are we thinking about how can I be a role model for this young person, how can I support this young person in you know, doing better in school or getting the school or things of that nature, like I said, which are very important, but it's also how can I help create an, an, an atmosphere that this young person is critically thinking. And that really sort of confirms for them, for the young people, that they have the answers. And it's really about them having access to resources, having things that support them, be able to make the right decisions. Each city has to take the foundation of the work which is very good. How are you going to have a relationship with violence if you don't have a relationship with hospitals? And to me, law enforcement. Those are the, the rudiments. That's the, the roux of the gumbo. That's the broth of the soup. But then they could put their own vegetables in it to make it theirs. We were fortunate enough that we had a resounding, I think 72% of voters say that they wanted this here in the city. They were willing to tax themselves to have this in their city. It's prioritizing the communities and the individuals who are at the center of violence, and it's letting them know that there are alternatives to reducing violence other than law enforcement and, and criminal justice approaches.